Hey everybody, it's your old pal Chuck, and I'm back with another review, and today we're taking a look at, from the Transformers Cyberverse uh, line, this is actually the Battle of Cybertron subline, you know, the subline of a subline, this is the Quintesson Invasion set, and what we have is uh, Spark Armor Shockwave and Spark Armor Prowl, along with a Quintesson Judge. And this is, be, I think, the second time we have officially gotten a Quintesson figure. And to be honest, I'll say it right now, I really don't think you can count Alpha Q. So this is real, because I don't even think Alpha Q was based on the Quintesson Judge. So really, we're looking at the first Quintesson Judge figure that uh, we've ever gotten. I mean, it's not exactly G1, but it does work. So, uh, now, I got this off of eBay. They are showing up in stores now. This was not advertised or anything like that. They are not store exclusives. Although I have recently heard that if you go to Target, you can find them on an end cap. So, really, real quick, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at Shockwave and Prowl and then get to the star of the show. Okay, real quick, there is no difference whatsoever between Shockwave and Prowl in this set and their individually released Spark Armor figures. There is no deco differences, no molding differences, at least nothing I can see. If you can pick something out, then hey, your eyes are better than mine. I'm 40 years old, you know, I've, I've lived a life, but... From what I can see, there are absolutely no differences. There's no point to bringing out the other figures because, for a comparison because there are no differences. Here they are in robot mode, and again, no deco differences. There, it, at least nothing I can see. What is new is you get these little mind control helmet masks that work with the same peg system as the spark armor. They go right over the head, just like so. You can use these with other figures, and oop, if I can get it on right, they peg right in. Of course, I have to have a problem with the uh, shockwave. Unless... Hmm. Oop. Helps if I... Oh, would you look at that? You know what? There is a difference. There, <laughs> There's a difference in these helmets. One fits on Prowl, one fits on Shockwave. So, and it probably has to do with the depth of the inside of the mask. Um, and how it uh, fits over. Because as you saw, one was pegging on to Prowl easily. Well, both peg on to Prowl easily, but one was not pegging on to Shockwave. So that's what they look like. Um, the helmets, I mean, if you look at them from the outside, they look uh, the, absolutely the same, and they go on and off the same way. Let me, let me try this again to make sure I'm not... Uh, doing something wrong. Yeah. Yeah, there is th there is a difference to the helmets. This is something interesting. So I'm, I'm oh yeah inside this helmet. I don't know if you can see it There's some extra ridging that has been smoothed out in this in this one that that allows it to fit over shockwaves horns so, why I would say yes, these are cross compatible with the other Spark Armor figures. Um, you might have to use that Shockwave one on any of the ones that have a uh, pronounced head unit. But then again, that one will fit just as fine on normal figures. It's just that that particular one has to be used on Shockwave. Very interesting. I just discovered that. So, enough of these figures, they're under my control. Let's get to the Quintesson Judge. Okay, so 
Obviously, if you're a fan of Transformers the movie and Transformers Season 3, you know what this figure is. Um, never would have thought we would ever have gotten a Quintesson, a, a proper Quintesson figure. Um, this is the Quintesson Judge. There's actually regular Quintessons, and then the, these are the Judges. Um, for most people, when you say the term Quintesson and they're a Transformers fan, this is what they think of. Um, in the packaging, the figure comes with uh, the tentacles folded down for storage. There are actually um, two sets of two in, that are uh, on these ball joint hinges. The ones in the back come folded in. You have, uh, a, you know, you do have your way of being able to uh, articulate them. I usually will keep mine some like this, you know, with these up a little just to for dis uh, display purposes. But the big gimmick of the judge, if you remember is that they had a rotating head. And we're starting off with this face, but if you come around, that's the one that uh, most people, I think, would remember. That's uh, guilty or death. Uh, I don't remember what that face is. I mean, honestly, I, I don't remember all their names, but as you can see, very nicely painted and detailed. I'm pretty sure I do have the figure facing forward, by the way. I'm not... I mean, because this is where these little side bits are which we, i think or their thrusters but there you go and we're back to the beginning i mean you could have it coming from this side and you know bring the arms around like that but i think they're it's meant to go this way it is very nicely sculpted um the non-articulated tentacles have these little nice little silver paint at the tips it does mask that there is a solid base there at the bottom and it's like a framework on the inside. I'm not sure if you can all see that through the black. It's like a little uh, up this way, across and down. That's all molded in. But um, I think this is kind of cool. Except for one little thing. And uh, this is act the whole set comes in an open faced packaging. So you know kids are going to come running along. And they're going to see that you can press down and they're just going to start doing this with these figures. And um, you can end up with a lot of uh, Quintesson judges that aren't working well. You're also going to probably end up with uh, a lot of these sets missing the masks because the masks are not secured. So people can just reach in and pull them off. So we'll pause and I'll come back with my final thoughts. Okay, so obviously the Quintessons are going to show up at some point in the Cyberverse cartoon. I've actually caught up as best as I can since I my on-demand service is missing two episodes. And they haven't happened yet, but they have been name-dropped in like the most recent episode. So, you know, we've already seen the Sharkticons. So again, I, I think it's only a matter of time before they come. Um, how they're going to be used... I don't know. It's interesting, though, that they included the judge in this set because if you were going to say there, there was a Quintesson that uses mind control, it would be one of the regular ones, not one of the judges. But, uh, yeah, I think this is a fantastic set. If you can get it for around 25 bucks, which is what I think it normally retails for, I, of course, had to pay the eBay markup. I mean, it's worth it alone for that Quintesson figure. Um, just be aware... This is what comes in the set. The Quintesson, Shockwave, and Prowl. Prowl has no accessories. Shockwave has his gun arm. But the bigger accessories are the helmets. So make sure before you grab it that the helmets are there attached. Because I can't unfortunately see people going in and just pulling the helmets off. Since, as I've said a few times already, there's nothing different between this version of Prowl and this version of Shockwave than the Spark Armor. And in fact, seeing as how now a lot of these Spark Armor figures are with the arm are going for under ten dollars ten dollars or less. I mean I got them off of eBay for under um, Amazon for under ten dollars. Um that could actually be the better value than getting this set. But then again, like I said, 
for $25, I think it's worth it to have an official Quintesson judge. This is your old pal Chuck for the Quintesson judge, Shockwave and Prowl, mind controlled. We will see you next time.